taken on Umberto Diaz. Unbeaten all the way from Belgium in the black trunks and dreadlocks. And David Leatherby alongside Dean Midat. And Dean, both these guys coming in with quite a resume. Yeah, Alberto is a pick em apart type style. He'll wait for the opportunity and he'll swarm all over the KO, KO if it presents itself. Excellent boxing and Muay Thai skills. Fast hands. We say that is a big right hand from his opponent, Galazi, but fantastic recovery skills from Diaz. Yeah, Galazi, on the other hand, he's highly motivated and confident. Very fast hands. His speed is amazing to watch in that cage. Very fast and furious, almost scrappy start here to this title fight. Galazi showing his threat though with that backhand. Could have been a low blow, yeah. Called probably our 25th low blow of the night, I think, something like that on a tally. Diaz will have five minutes to recover. But wow, Dean, fast start from these two. Both getting after it. I mean, we are scheduled for five rounds. Yeah, both powerful strikers with, with good wrestling. Um, but we've got Umberto's overhand right. This fight finishing, and he couples that with great head movement, uses to slip and roll to evade hooks and straight punches. Yeah, great to see technicians like this coming into Fight Star Championship. Great work from... Raj Singh and the team bring him over from Belgium, an unbeaten fighter. Galazi getting those low kicks going, Dean. Galazi now working centre in the cage, blasting that lead leg. He's trying to take the spring and the power out of Umberto. These two both throwing a lot of heat. And Galazi. Known for a tenacious stole and that right hand that finds a home. Umberto forced to swarm backwards and keep those hands up. Yeah, I mean, Umberto smiling, Dean, and, and opening his hands wide, but he got clipped on a couple of occasions there. He's got to be careful. He did a great job of throwing that, le that low leg kick out there and getting his hand up. See the way he's pulling his left hand up? He's trying to cover his temple and his chin for the counter punch. Lazi really made a beeline for that low kick. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Umberto opts to take this fight to the ground if he eats too many of those leg kicks. He's landing them himself, but doesn't seem to have as much pep on as, as Galazi, who's really getting after it thus far. Galazi needs to think about checking these kicks. Likewise for Umberto, they just need to lift that lead leg up and catch the kick on the shin. Nice right hand over the top. And another low kick goes crashing in. Both these fighters opting to keep this fight standing. As it would promise, when I was doing the research for the notes, they both look for the KO finish. Excellent boxing and striking skills across the board. Very back and forth round. Lots and lots of action. And, uh, a lot for the judges to see. I think both fighters, particularly Diaz team, will be looking to start checking some of these low kicks. I mean, they both shipped a huge amount, but Diaz in particular taking a lot to league leg. It doesn't seem to be affecting his movement now, but I mean, there's no way around it. It's going to in the future, right? Yeah, they, they start to add up. I mean, and he shouldn't shy away from the takedown game. He's got great takedowns, and he's got solid guard passes when he gets on top to see if he tries to implement that here in the second round. Second round underway here. Roberto Diaz on the outside, looking for a way in. Some fancy footwork, looking for the lead kick. I love the way he went high with the lead kick and then low with the rear round kick. 
Yeah, as I mentioned in between rounds, he has landed a number of low kicks himself, hasn't he? And a, a, another one lands then. I guess the threat, Dean, is as uh, Galazi goes for the takedown, is the counter right hand from Galazi, isn't it? Because he has landed a few of those over the top. Just like that one. Very frustrated, just got another low blow. I think Galazi's frustrated, Dean. Of course he's going to be, but when guys are throwing this volume of leg kicks inside and outside, I mean, it's inevitable, right? It's going to happen. Yeah, Diaz has got to think about economy of movement. And these are the keys to him setting up that killer strike. He's just got to make sure they're a bit more accurate. <laughs> a call to book him from the crowd. <laughs> Rich Mitchell electing not to use the, uh, the famous yellow card. Yeah, that was the old school pride, pride days, right? Yeah, 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 to be fair. Back underway here. Galezi, very light on his feet. You notice he's always on the balls of his feet. He's never flat-footed unless he's delivering power, and that enables him to move in and out of range very effectively. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't gone back to low kick yet this round. Is that something to do with the movement of Diaz, Dean? Diaz now is pressure, and he's getting in that box. He's getting in the danger zone there. The trouble is if you throw a leg kick and leave your head too far forward, you can get countered with the left hooks or the overhand rights. Yeah, noticeable change in the way Diaz is moving around. Far more cautious. There just seems more thought in this second round now from both fighters, Dean. Both fighters have fight finishing KO power in their hands and feet. So they've really got to start timing these shots. Nice lead up a cut there, left hook attempt from Umberto. But they've really got to look for these nuances, look for the little ways in and set them up accordingly. Umberto now utilizing the parry. I'd like to see him parry and fire the one two and finish with a leg kick off that. Oh, beautiful right hand counter. But Umberto trying to respond now. Now looks to get the floor. Action to the floor, excuse me. When these two explode, it really is a sight to behold. Oh, a nice left hook on the break there. A tenacious fight so far, and the scrambles from Umberto. He's just so good, and it enables him to it's like kind of come out on top and still strike. Again, that low kick that was so successful for Glazi in the first round. You can see now, Dean, a bit of marking on that lead leg. Yeah, the redness is starting to show. Nice knee there. Again, no, that didn't go south. It looked like to us that it hit referee. the hit area. Yeah, referee Rich Mitchell telling him that he stops the fight, not the fighter. He's arguing back with the referee and there's only a few seconds to go left in this round anyway, I believe. Galizzi utilising that fake jab, but he needs to start th putting things on the end of those strikes and make Umberto think twice about coming in and staying so close in the pocket and striking. Yeah, definitely a very, very interesting round again. Referee just going to tell Galazi, listen, you fight until I tell you to stop. I mean, it's one of the first rules that you learn as a fighter, right, Dean? I know it must be frustrating for him, but he's got to wait for the referee to step in there. Uh, from Diaz's point of view, a few adjustments into the second round, Dean. I mean, it's, it's still so evenly matched, this one, isn't it? It's in the balance. Yeah, I'd like to see Gillesi set up that straight right hand down the pipe. You can see Umberto, he can tend to come straight forward in these striking exchanges, which makes him slightly predictable. Yeah, this one still very much in the balance here as we go into the third round. Again, we see Umberto take center cage, hands nice and high, leg kick again, and he switched his leg back, switched stance to evade the damage of that kick. 
I'd like to see Gillesi fake low and go high, question mark kick and go upstairs. Left and right hand combination from Umberto. I wonder if Umberto's trying to set up a, a, a head kick maybe. That left high kick. I'll tell you what, it's frantic when these two get in the clinch. Again, referee just calling time to bring him in. Just trying to clean it up. I, I, I just mentioned it was frantic, Dean. It, it does look a little wild in the clinch, doesn't it? Both, both going for the knees. And I think Rich Mitchell just trying to get a, a read on these low blows before they start happening again almost. Yeah, both of these fights, you get it. I mean, they're intense and talented and game fighters. They both want to chase after that win and expose the knockout. And you're going to get that in the interim, in the exchanges, in the scrambles. As we see a left hook combination, left hand, right hook. Looking for the left hook there is Galezi. Quite a pace these two have put down. This one is scheduled for five rounds. Umberto looking for that big overhand right, and Galezi quite rightly looks for the outside trip. He's got great dominant top pressure, and his ground and pound is excellent from this position. A beautiful takedown now, Galezi. On top of Diaz, looking to pass into half guard or maybe all the way into side, Dean. Galezi's forte is the side control. He's got a great pressuring style, but Umberto's doing a great job scrambling on the floor and getting his knees in between the body of him and his opponent. A legal knee straight to the head. Saw it very clearly from our vantage point, Dean. That was a knee straight to the head of a downed opponent. Yeah, unfortunately, you can see Umberto Diaz in the corner, clasping the left side of his head. Yeah, a legal knee. I, mean, I saw it straight into the side of the head. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And it's, it's, it's disappointing from Glazi's point of view because he must know, Dean, whereabouts he is on the body. You know, he's, he's, he's inside control. He knows that top knee is going to be near the head. I mean, unless you're aiming for a, for a shoulder strike, maybe. I mean, it's, it's a big risk, isn't it? Yeah, and it was just such a shame for this fight to end in this way. It was such a really great right. fight. Um, you know, the tenacious style of both fighters. But again, that could have been the poison for Galezi. And it's all waved off, Dave. It's been waved off. What a disappointing end to this. Galezi looks absolutely devastated over there. But there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, Rich Mitchell, he's one of the best in the business. It's an illegal knee to the head. If the fighter says he's unable to continue or the doctor says he's unable to continue the referee has absolutely no choice Dean there's no other result this fight can take I mean the corner arguing with him now but unfortunately Galazi he's had a great performance but he only has himself to blame yeah fighter safety paramount here at Fight Star and an illegal strike almost certainly you don't want this to precipitate and sediment down later on in the fight and cause some damage to the fighter so it's perfectly justifiable here